What's up, hustlers? It's your boy JT Automation back with another video. I'm here again with Miss Sheena. If you guys have not seen the videos we have on this channel about government contracting, you are missing out. Matter of fact, I'm gonna make a government contracting playlist mm -hmm. so you can just watch all of these videos as it pertains to government contracting and learn everything you need to know so that you can make an informed decision and tap in with her. What we're gonna talk about is a common question that people always have and they wanna know about bidding. So we're gonna talk about all of that and more right after the intros. So thank you for coming back on the channel again, Miss Sheena. All right. So what is a bid? We're going to start super <laughs> oh, simple, man. like a, as elementary as we can, because I want people to leave this video informed or leave this entire playlist informed. So when, when somebody says, oh, if you want this government contract, you need to put a bid in. What are they saying in layman's terms to somebody that's not familiar with government contract? I would say think eBay. Um, okay. So eBay has a product. They have some shoes and mm -hmm. you put in your bid essentially but just pretend that the, the amount that you're putting in uh, includes paperwork as well and you're telling eBay the person who's selling the shoes hey I want to get these shoes for ten dollars okay. and then typically the person is going to go with what the highest bidder on, on eBay? On eBay. Yep. But the government's going to usually go with the lowest bidder. Okay. So it's it's basically the same thing. You're putting in the paperwork saying, government, I want to uh, do this service or I want to uh, give you this product. Here's my price and here's my strategy of how I'm going to do it. Okay. Yeah. So it's just explaining to them. They'll say, this is the job. So we're not in a federal building, but imagine if you, wherever you are watching, this was a federal building and they say, well, we need somebody to clean all 10 of these federal buildings that's on this street my bid will say well i'm going to get 10 mops 10 brooms <laughs> essentially 10 employees yeah and just telling them how i'm going to do it and how much money i will charge them to do that Yes, more or less. Um, a lot of times they'll have it already written out. You need oh. to have ten employees, and these are the hours that they need to work. So a lot of times, if you just read a bid, you'll have everything you need, even if you don't know what you're doing. That's okay. how I really started to learn the language. Is they had it all in there, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, how much is that going to cost for me? I'm thinking about yeah. how much do I? What's minimum wage? Mm -hmm. Someone has to work 24 hours, three yeah. people, you know, eight hour shifts. How much is that going to be per week? Mm -hmm. And so then I said, okay, well, if it if I need supplies, how much does that typically cost? And you always go above. And then how much do I want to make in profit in a perfect world? Okay. okay. And then, then you submit that based on whatever they're asking. They're usually asking for a year plus. No. So they're asking for the first year and then like four option years, for example. So then that five year combination is what's going to be what you submit to the government to include your documents, like your registrations and all those things. Okay. All right. I'm going to ask you a no duh question, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a leading question to further the discussion. Have you ever lost a bid <laughs> <laughs> almost every day no, right. like I would say um, it's that's actually a good question because people have to understand when you bid and lose mm -hmm. that you can live to bid another day yeah. because I mean there was a time where like I told you I were, won my first three okay so I was like this is a breeze like yeah. life is good mm -hmm. and then COVID happened and I didn't win anything for nine months uh -huh. and we were bidding like two or three a week mm -hmm. so that does something to your psyche yeah. but then in January 2021 I won six in one week oh yeah so you kind of like how do you measure that there's really no way to measure it so you just got to continue to build relationships and continue to bid i've lost many bids for random reasons like doing mm -hmm. a double all-nighter doing this paperwork and they canceled the whole bid and nobody got anything and they sent uh, me my whole packet back unopened <laughs> yeah. now that does something to your psyche yeah for real, so all right yeah. so and the encouraging thing for you all is to let you know like she said um i know a lot of people that they they've heard about government contracts then, but they don't know anything about it or they they know of somebody that said well they tried it but they put in one bid one time didn't really know what they were doing didn't get the bid and immediately read it uh, wrote it off as this ain't something that you can do it's super hard to do uh, the government already know who they want to use yeah. right these are the kind of things that we tell ourselves uh, if you're like me and come from low-income environments so hopefully the value you get out of this playlist is that it is possible so uh she, like she said, as somebody that has successfully been in this business for years, uh, she sometimes loses bids and she just continues to bid on. Uh, do 
you mind sharing with us uh, what do you think is the reason why or the most common reason why you lost bids early on? Um, bid too high. Okay. That was the biggest thing. Um, I had a contractor, like I said, coming from real estate, mm -hmm. a contractor who believed in, you know, charge your price, which yeah. is cool. I, I agree with charge your price, but for what we were bidding on, we didn't, we shouldn't have charged that price. Um, so what happens is when you bid on something and um, you get the results back, they show everyone's results. Oh. So we bid on one where it was, I think the price that one was 20,000 and I bid five. 500,000 oh. and that was like so embarrassing because yeah. they put all your information there and so it's like oh, so they knew your company name oh, and all everything that. like uh, what is she don't even know what she talking about so it, it makes um that's one of the biggest things is knowing your pricing and people okay. ask me daily like how do I know my price it's that's where knowing your industry makes a difference you, it's really hard to get into an industry when you don't know anything about it and you mm -hmm. don't know the price and you don't know what makes sense you don't know how to identify those gaps okay. so pricing was really rough and reliable people because right. I'm talking about facilities so I'm always mm -hmm. talking about laborers so it, it was it was rough with those two things all right so it, that goes to show you because I know a lot of people when they think of government contracting you think what well, the government print money so <laughs> I could tell them I'm gonna charge them a million dollars to sweep this floor and they're gonna just print a million dollars and get it to me Ooh, to sweep the floor if only <laughs> if only yeah so, so you have to still come at it as a business person uh, Ms. Cena does have a full training program that we're going to get into here in a second that will help you uh, structure your business right and really get into bidding uh, in a way that is competitive for your niche, for your, your industry, whatever industry you so choose to get into. So you were saying the biggest thing is price and, the, and, uh, and personnel as well. All right. So I'm thinking about it as somebody that's completely new. I want to get into government contracting. So of course, I'm going to tap in with your training and learn all the stuff that I don't know but when it comes to putting together a bid you you also said that they'll pick somebody and then I guess they'll share everybody's bid with everybody that bid so it's no do-overs so they're not <laughs> going to say to, um, nah and then you can and I say this because in previous videos if you watched it she has a real estate background you guys know I invest in real estate as well so you know you can make an offer on a house they can do a counter bid right. so the government don't do no counters they do oh okay um um, sometimes it's uh, called best and final offer. Okay. Usually, a best and I have a really good example with this. Usually, a best and final offer that means that everybody bid too high, but they really <laughs> need it done. So they're like, hey, you know, you can bid a little low. Basically, it's saying, can you bid a little lower? That's okay. what it is. There was one that I bid on where they were looking for best and final offer, but they actually sent everyone's pricing before it was awarded, which is like I've never seen that before or after that. So of course, most people are going to go below the lowest person, and yeah. so I didn't move my price. I'm like knowing what I knew about that contract it was like mowing or something I didn't go down on my price but they kind of did a do-over and the mm -hmm. person who went under the lowest original lowest bidder won mm -hmm. I thought that was kind of unfair uh, but, you know it was it was a game yeah to get you to go, low, go lower oh. I'm not a subject matter expert in everything so when there are topics like this that I think can bring you a lot of value I'm gonna bring the subject matter expert so Sheena is the subject matter expert for government contracting so if you got any questions comments concerns you know what to do put it in the premiere put it in the comment section below but definitely tap in with her on her social media and uh and her training as well so when it comes to putting bids on things we talked a little bit about it previously but you were saying that there you could there's so many different contracts out there you could bid on any, everything from cutting grass to pressure washing beans to, and rice to <laughs> beans and rice to the prison <laughs> to the prison okay yeah. all right so so i i want to say that because i want you guys to understand that you might be sitting there saying jt i don't have a business i don't have a skill set i i i can't do construction i'm not a landscaper all of that stuff but understand that you can learn uh, or you can learn government contracting and you can put a bid in just to provide this item to this federal building government building whatever you want to call it and get paid just for doing that so but bidding is a big is a big part of it would you say bidding is the biggest part of it prior to actually doing the job but if you're if you're going the bidding route right because like for my friend as a sub she didn't have to bid okay. um, so you if you have relationships then you can get a contract that way even directly okay. as a prime so okay. if you are going the bidding route then yeah 
that naturally because you're they're, you're, they're judging by what you're submitting. Okay. Um, so bidding would be the biggest thing if you're going the bidding route, but that's not the only way to get a contract. Okay. Yeah. So in summary, uh, for those of you that have all those questions about bidding, ask somebody that does bids <laughs> and has been in this business for years, two biggest things that she pointed out again were people bidding too much or people not having the proper personnel. But if you have more questions and you want to know more about what is a bid, how to bid, hey, Sheena, will you help me learn how should I bid on this service or procurement of this product? Definitely check out the links down description below. She has a full training course. Will you end by telling the people what they'll learn in the training course? Yeah, so in my course, GovConf Awareness, I teach you how to be a three-tier contractor. I'm teaching you about federal, local, and corporate contracting. I'll take you from cradle to wedding, and I also have stuff for my veterans. All right, so if you, that sounds interesting to you, which it should, because this is the biggest customer in the United States, right? Um, and last question that I just thought of too. We're in Atlanta when we're, when we're recording this, right? Um, let's say that I don't live in Atlanta, because I don't. Uh, if I wanted a government contract in Atlanta, but I live in North Carolina, is that possible? Oh, yeah. So can somebody win a contract in another state? I don't wait. I know you've been enjoying this video or else you wouldn't have watched it this far, but that's the exact reason why I want to present to you a very special offer that I only want to give out to my top followers. If you're somebody out there that understands that real estate is a great way to create, grow, and store your wealth, however you think you either need a ton of money to get into it, or you got to be super knowledgeable because it's super technical to do it without having any money, well, I have an ebook that I designed especially for you. If you're interested in knowing how to buy real estate for $1,000 or less with no wholesaling, and without taking on any debt. I'm gonna teach you how to get paid just for trying. And if that interests you, check out the first link down in the description below. And now, let's get back to this game. I have contracts in other states. Okay. Yeah. I guess the best thing to do is um, make sure you have a manager. It depends on what it is, because there's some contracts where you just do it once a month, um, or it might be uh, IT where you don't need to be there at all. Oh, okay. yes. You know, they say, hey, you need to come here once a year to, to talk to people. Um, I know many friends that do staffing, and so they don't need to be anywhere. They have the staff there, and they mm -hmm. just say, hey, I'm your new boss. Here's your paperwork. <laughs> have a nice day. Um, you definitely can do contracting anywhere as long as it makes sense to you. Now, mm -hmm. if you know you have to be there every other week and it's in Alaska, that may not be the contract for you, <laughs> yeah. obviously. All right, so there you have it, you guys. More information about government contracting and bidding can be found in the description below. Till next time, talk my hustlers, stay hustling. JT Automations, I'm gone.